Hey, good morning everybody. This is Kate Quinn from Fabricated Quilts. And today we're going to do some free motion Fridays. And the topic is thread and the impact that it can have on your project. So I've got just some basic black fabric here. Um, it's cotton and I'll show you the setup really quickly. One side is the double layer of batting and one side is the single layer. And we'll just talk about showing the samples on both sides so you can see the impact. And let's see if we can get just maybe a little wider picture. All right, so the first thread that I'm starting with, they're all a teal color, um, kind of. You know, the, this is the selection for today. So you'll have to bear with us if we're gonna get through this because we'll have to do some thread changes. But threads are different weights and they're different fibers and they make a difference to how things look. So what I thought we'd do is make a little sample where we explore what these can do for you and their visual impact. And then just maybe talk about some needle choices and things like that as you shift down in different sizes. So let's talk really quickly. I'm gonna pull up, let's see, this one right here. And you can see right there, it says 100 weight. This is Invisafil by Wonderfill, the Wonderfill company. Let's see if you can see that. There's the color. So this is a little bluer than the other ones, but it's very, very fine. So the bigger the thread number, the more narrow the weight of the thread, right? So this is very, very fine. And I want you to also look at it and kind of see the drape. So if I have a little slack in this thread on the black here, it has kind of a look of its own, right? It's a little more wiry perhaps than some other threads, right? And here's how you can tell. This is a polyester thread, right? On the black, you can kind of see how it moves. And then this is a natural fiber silk. And you can kind of see how that looks a little bit different does hold a little bit of the wind, right? But its drape is actually very, very gentle and very nice. It's not wiry at all. So it will actually start to conform to whatever the fabric is where the polyester is a little bit more uh, stiffer. And that doesn't, that's not a negative comment. That's just a fact. This is a great thread. I use it and I think it works really well, but there's just some differences between the fibers. Okay, so the first one that I'm using today is Isocord. And we're gonna kinda do maybe the same little style of design so that you can see it. I'm gonna put the style of thread up. This is the first style that we're gonna be using. It's Isocord 40, which means that the thread is 40 weight and it is a polyester thread. Okay, so this is the first style of thread, but we're gonna use teal. And just to give us some shape and some body so we can make some comparisons, we'll go ahead and do these little circles. I don't know, I might need smaller circle if I'm gonna do that many. Let me grab a little smaller one. I'm just gonna make little fun polka dots today because we can. Um, I think the three inch size will probably be good. So I have a couple different sizes of these. And we'll just start down here on the corner and we'll just make them random. We're not trying to line them up or anything. We're just having fun. In the bobbin right now, I have a 40 weight and it's kind of a teal color. Okay, so it's just the, all of these are going to be the same color um, on the top, give or take. And then the bottom will be this sort of robin's egg blue. That's the color that I have right here. And that'll let us maybe see a little bit of difference if we have tension issues because whenever we're changing weights of thread, it's not uncommon that you may need to make an adjustment for your thread, right? So let's go ahead and put the needle down. We've got our bobbin threads up and let's just start sewing. Okay, as I sew, I'm gonna keep a nice even rhythm. I'm gonna try to move as smoothly as possible. And I can tell you right now already that with this 40 weight thread, I think that my tension is not good because this top thread is kind of laying on here, meaning that it's pulling up so hard that this is kind of laying flat. So I'm just gonna adjust it down a bit. It was at 6.2 and I'm gonna go down to about 
six on my machine in terms of the thread tension. Now, I don't have to move this. I can leave it on here if I want to, or I can take it off, but let's just put some crazy free motion fills. We're just gonna wanna see how the thread is performing. So I wanna keep things a little bit the same. Come back to that same spot, and then we'll just come down a tiny bit, and we'll just echo this one on that side. Okay, and then I'm gonna make a little note of what thread that we have on each section. This is the 40 weight isocord, so let me grab my marking tools and we'll just put that on there. That way you can see. I think it is very much worth making a sample like this as I'm knocking everything off, but that's okay. So we'll just go ahead and cut this thread really quick. I am using my scissor button today, did you see that? But I don't usually do that on a project, it just makes the bobbin a little bit harder to pull up. So let's cut our dangly threads. And I'll flip it over just so we can check the tension as we get started. And that way we can sort of keep track of any changes that we need to make. This is 40 weight, this is poly, and it's isocord. Okay? So it's not as bad as I thought on this outside. I don't really see the top thread, you know, but you can see that it's pulled up and then if you look on this side, see how it looks kind of flat, you don't get that definition. And then when we change the tension, look how much better it is. So in this case, I lowered my tension down from this. This was pulling too much and this is more balanced, okay? All right, so that's one thread. So let's go ahead and we'll do basically the same style one more tip before I change my thread. I'm going to pull the thread down so you can see it. This is a mini cone right here. And if you're using a mini cone and you're going to ride it this way as opposed to this way, if it's on your machine like this, you want this spool pin on it, right? That way when the thread spools off, it's not going to catch on anything, okay? So this is the proper spool pin if you're riding these type of spools in this direction. And most machines do come with that. If they don't, you can ask your dealer if he can get you one. Okay, so I, I actually use that a lot because I use a lot of mini cones. And you can also run this thread just like this and it spools off just fine if you put it on a thread stand like this. Okay, so that was 40 weight. So I'm gonna show you the next one I have. This is from Madeira and this is viscous, which is I think kind of a nylon style. And let me just open that up, if I can get this open. I haven't used this color, but I have a whole selection of this kind of thread, and I do use it a lot. It's for embroidery, for the most part. Now, when I say that, I don't care. You know, to me, if the thread is like, oh, eh, embroidery or whatever, oh, there it is, it's rayon, okay? Rayon is a natural fiber, too, and let me just go like this. Wah, super easy. Didn't even, like, make a little dent in my finger. If I try to pull a poly apart like that, if I try to pull this isocord and break it like that, ooh, I might cut myself. This thread is so strong. This thread is not as strong. Its benefit is that it's really shiny and vibrant. It has a really good shimmer, and that's why people like it for embroidery, because it's really pretty. But if you're using this for strength, then that's not the best value of this thread. So I wouldn't use this, for example, on a baby quilt that's gonna get a high degree of use. I'm gonna go ahead and just use something that is stronger. Okay, so let me make sure that this will spin here. There we go. Okay, and let me get threaded up. I'm still using a 9014 needle because this is a 40 weight thread, so it's pretty uh, weighty in terms of its look. But we'll do it right next to this 40 weight so we can really see the difference and see what the impact is of the thread. And I wish I could have them perfectly matched in color, but I just can't. That's just how it is. All right, so let's, here we go. I don't want them to be too matchy-matchy, right? We don't want them to be all in, in the exact same spot. Oh, I did it. I got my thread up the first time. That never happens when I use the scissor button. 
Okay, so again, just let's go around. Okay, it's 40 weight, so I've kept the tension the same. I haven't adjusted it at this point. I still see a lot of great definition in my thread. I'll turn it just a little bit so you can see it better. I, I see really good definition there. I don't see, you know, like the thread is laying flat. You can really tell each stitch is definition right there. Okay, and now let's go ahead and we'll just make our little curly cue. We'll go the other way. We'll go maybe a little bit this way. And touch, come over the top. And we're gonna grade our way into the circle. And then right here, I'll try to use the, the ruler and just come down a little bit. And then just do this bottom yin and yang. And we'll tie it off. All right, and we'll cut some threads. So same weight of thread, a little different look, right? Still, oh, can you see that? See the tension right there is actually a little pulled up. So that means that this is actually still a little high of a tension for this thread because that is the light blue on the back that's being pulled up right there. I can physically see it. So I'm gonna just lower it down a little bit. All right, so this is the rayon thread, viscous rayon, natural fiber, and then this is the poly right there, okay? All right, so when we put those two together, let's kind of scoot out so you can get both of them, the look of both of them right there. Still, they look good, right? I mean, there's just a little bit of difference between them. I don't know that you can really see the difference with those 40 weights, but where you can feel the difference with the rayon is the poly is stronger. So if you're a new user, poly is definitely better. Rayon is way weaker. And if you need a quilt that's gonna be lasting a really long time and have heavy use, I wouldn't quilt with rayon unless the rayon was just decorative. I would use the poly or even the cotton, but poly is certainly the strongest. Okay, so let's move down. We're gonna move down to some 50 weight. This is so fine by Superior, and this is a 50 weight thread, and you can see right on there, it's recommending a needle change to 8012 for this because this thread is finer. Um, we will test it with just the needle that we have. It's a 50 weight, and it's a three ply thread. So three ply tells you that the thread is gonna be stronger, number one, just because it's twisted up, it's gonna be a little bit stronger than some other threads like a two ply right but this is what it's going to look like and there's the drape on it so it's just a little bit less drapey than you know some like cotton is going to be a little softer than that a little more natural but this is an awesome thread it works amazing you're going to put it on there like that and put your large spool cap on I'm just gonna take my threads off one at a time and we'll get this threaded up. I'm just gonna pull my cap right off. Ooh, just take that off, this gets sticky and then I think that makes it hard for it to move around. Sometimes if you actually have a sticky spool, um, like it has the tape on it or something like that, you can see like I could just pull mine off, it just comes right with me. But sometimes that tape can prevent your spool from feeding properly and cause it to stick and that causes thread problems. So definitely for sure, um, take the time to make sure that your thread is moving cleanly on the spool once you've got it threaded. Just kind of pull out a little bit and make sure that it can spool off properly. Otherwise that may be the reason that you've done everything else correctly and that's giving you a challenge. Okay, so let's do the next one. Now this is 50 weight and this is polyester. So we'll put another little circle on here and we'll see what happens. So the physical presence of this thread is going to be a little bit less than the one that we just had. And I'm using a bigger needle than is recommended. So let's mention what happens when we use the wrong size needle. If this hole is bigger than the thread, like it's a big size hole, it can pull the needle 
the bobbin thread up through the hole because the hole is so big, right? And I think some people don't know that. That's why we need the proper needle size when we're working with our threads. We need them to be the correct size so they are going to hide that knot in the bottom. So let's see what happens. We may be okay and we may not. Just like changing threads, I do think it is worth changing your needle size when your thread is calling for that. I've got a little thread sticking out here. I'll just move that over. So I'm gonna go right past our start point to tack that off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing our little weave right here. And I can follow right along the circle and come back to do this side. And we'll tack it off. All right, so thread colors on this and the 40 weight viscous are really, really close to each other, I think. And we can kind of put these right next to each other. We'll kind of hold them just like this so you can see. Can you see that the weight of the thread? It is finer, for sure. You can definitely tell it does make a difference. I'll just kind of try to get them a little closer together. Right? It's subtle. It's very subtle, that difference. But it's there. So that's going to be something that if you have a very heavily pieced project and your thread isn't going to make that much difference, like the visibility isn't going to make that much difference, then maybe I don't want that really heavy thread. Maybe just this lighter thread is sufficient to quilt it up, have everything secured, and I don't need that heavier thread. So. Also, if I just want the design, the quilting design to be more subtle, this is a simple way to just make it be more subtle. Um, so somebody asked just now, how long has it taken me to develop my skill, my quilting skill? So I'll tell you that I've been quilting um, since I was 22 years old, 22 years old. I started making a baby quilt when I was pregnant for my son and I, I didn't really, dive in more aggressively probably until about five years later and then I've been really quilting pretty consistently ever since and about 15 years ago I would say I was completely a junkie I was quilting every day and I was taking classes and I was uh, beginning to teach and things like that so you know I remember that at different times in my life I haven't had time right to do all of those things that I might like to do I've got time every day now to practice but if you can just take a few minutes each day to practice or you know maybe three times a week and try to develop skills maybe one or two skills at a time i think that for me i did a lot of piecing early on and not a lot of quilting early on you know the whole quilting side i, I did have a long armor who was helping me um, and several of my quilts are i attribute to her but now I'm, I'm free, I'm free to do those things. Okay, so let's see where we're at. Um, we just did the 50 weight. So I'm gonna, I think I dropped one of my threads. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, so the one that we just did there is so fine. And then I'm gonna show you this one. This one is cotton, right? And you could tell it's got a little fuzz on it, right? It's a little fuzzier, it actually looks heavier than this uh, so fine and I would tell you that I think so fine looks even cleaner like if you look at the here we'll go out there see like that it doesn't look fuzzy right that this is 50 weight and then this is 50 weight and this one you can tell right off the bat if you look at it it's a little fuzzier because it's cotton Julia just asked what weight do I prefer I don't have a preference in the sense that I am going to use whatever will give me the image, the design effect that I want. That's why we're sharing all these different sizes because they have different effects. I will tell you that I am not, cotton is not the first thing I'm going to go to. The first thing I'm going to go to is probably 40 weight cotton, uh, 40 weight poly, right? 40 weight like isocord, 
Floriani Exquisite Thread. Um, I'm trying to think of the other. Fantastico, Magnifico. I love variegated threads, but they are more tricky when you're a younger user or less experienced. But this 40 weight, the poly is strong and it's very forgiving. So this, this is why I like it because it's a no fuss thread. Sometimes if you're using some of these other threads, you're gonna have to fuss around a little bit more. Cotton is not as strong as polyester, right? If I just, right, break, right? Let's break this poly. Let's see if I can do it. I'm gonna have to really work hard. Okay, and it's gonna shred up when it breaks, but it takes a lot more tension to break it, right? So I like that poly because it's stronger. That's probably my first choice, and it's the thread I recommend for newer users who are just getting going and need that little bit of forgiveness as they get control of their movements, right? So let's get this threaded up. I'm, I've got my uh, thread setting again. I need a smaller spool cap for this one, so let me find it. Right here. Always use the appropriate spool cap for your thread. If you're using a smaller spool, you want a smaller cap. This is just big enough to prevent the thread from catching in any of this. This actually has like a little sharp area right there. So this cap is gonna let that thread spool off very well. Um, I just saw a funny question. What's your answer to folks who say poly is a no-no? I say they can make their own decision. They can do whatever they want. I'm gonna do what I want because I'm in charge of my own quilts. And I, I remember back in the day, there was a lot of chatter about that. When I started quilting, it was like quilting cotton only, don't use anything else. So let's explore that a little bit as we're talking, okay? If I have a baby quilt that I'm making, can I use cotton thread for cotton? Yes. The old um, adage about only using cotton was that polyester is, because it is stronger and it has a longer life, it's gonna outwear the cotton of the thread, you know, of the fiber that the quilt is made of. But if I have a baby quilt, is my baby quilt gonna last 50 years? It darn well better not. I hope they drag that thing around and they spit on it and they use it as a fort and they use it as a picnic blanket and they snuggle up to it and they chew on the end of it. It's not gonna last 50 years. I don't give a rat's patootie if it lasts 100 years. I want it to be loved and used to the nth degree. So it doesn't matter what thread, that, that quilt is not gonna last forever. If I'm making an heirloom quilt that I want to be passed down to two and three generations, maybe I would use cotton. Honestly, maybe I wouldn't. The polyester threads, all of the threads that we have today are so much better designed and the dyes are so much better designed than the threads that we had 30 years ago. So. Honestly, I think the rule is you should use whatever you want. Whatever gives you the design image that you want, the look that you're interested in, the one that behaves, that's really important. If your machine does not like a certain thread and you're constantly fighting with it, are you gonna wanna sew? I'm not, I hate that, it drives me bananas. So I really recommend using something that works well with your machine, that you can afford, that's comfortable, you know, I like silk thread, but it's a lot more expensive, right? So maybe using a hundred weight Invisifil is a really good option when I need a low presence thread, and then I don't have to worry so much about the cost because it's not as expensive. I think that quilters, for some reason, we, we do transfer our experience to others, but it does seem like sometimes we always have a lot of rules, and unless the rule is you know affecting the function for example like if we have a bias and we're trying to put the bias on the outside of the quilt that is generally not a good idea can you do it of course you can if you want to but it has consequences and if you're willing to deal with those consequences then you should feel comfortable doing whatever you want right you're in charge okay so this is that cotton thread and I can tell you that right away, cotton tends to spread a little bit, like the visual impact of it is a little bit fuller, richer look. This is a 50 weight cotton. 
So can you imagine if you're using a 40 weight cotton, it's even gonna be heavier than this. I think that this almost looks heavier than all of the threads on here right now. And that is just because the way the cotton looks and the way it feels. It has a different presence and it also has a little bit more uh, grip to it. So when I'm basting, I like to use a polyester thread that is silkier because I can pull that right out, whereas cotton is gonna grip cotton fibers, cotton quilting fibers more, and it's gonna draw in a little bit more because it's basically holding on to them, right? And so this is a lighter weight thread than two of those other threads, but it really looks, I think, very much the same. It has a very strong presence, right? I mean, this one almost looks lighter than this because this is such a, a full body thread. And then here is your 40 weight isocord right next to your 50 weight cotton right there, okay? So this definitely is gonna show. Cotton tends to have just a little bit more visual presence even if the thread is a little bit lighter. I do use Aurifil. A lot of the Aurifil cottons are a two-ply, which makes them a little flatter um, in general, but they are still strong. I've actually quilted a king-size quilt with a 28-weight Aurifil thread on the top and this um, 40 on the bottom and it worked awesome. I didn't have a single thread break on a long arm for a king size quilt. That was pretty amazing. So, you know, quality also matters. You want a thread that is gonna last and be really good quality. If you have threads that are, have been sitting on the shelf for years or have been exposed to sun or they're your grandmother's grandmother's things that are passed down on the wooden spool, yeah, keep those in a little jar as a cool heirloom. Don't put those on your quilt. Uh, Aurifil, I am betting Aurifil is a long staple cotton. I can't imagine it would be a short because short affects the strength. That is what long staple, that means that the fiber is longer so then when they spin it, it's got more connection along longer lines of fiber. So typically you, you want that long staple cotton and Aurifil is a very good quality thread made in Italy. I would be really shocked if they used anything but a long staple fiber. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for checking, Meg. <laughs> Good job, you're awesome. But yeah, I, I wouldn't understand why they would do it any other way because their branding is that they're a very high quality product and so they wouldn't really be able to claim that I think otherwise. Okay, so let's go ahead, um, let's move on. So we said this is 40 weight, right? Did I say that? No, 40 weight. Uh, 50 weight, one we haven't done yet, and this is again rayon, and this is, you can see how shiny this is. What did we say about shiny threads? What are most shiny threads? This is rayon, awesome rayon, and this is 30 weight. It doesn't look 30 weight to me, like some of the 30 weights I have are super heavy, but this is a 30 weight thread and absolutely super gorgeous how it sews. So let's go ahead and put that on. This is a mini cone, so I'm gonna use that mini cone holder when I put it on to make sure that it'll spool off properly. I don't want my little threads to just fall everywhere. They, they, they're starting to roll away. <laughs> okay, so this one is actually heavier and it's, it's the next one in the line because these are the most common. 40 and 50 is the most common, right? So you got polyester, we have cotton, and we have rayon in this grouping right here. We have different groupings. And this is 40 to 50. So now we're using what I would consider to be a specialty thread because it's not that commonly used. It's a little bit more expensive. The thread is a little bit heavier. This one is variegated. It's the closest I had in that um, 30 weight. So that's why I selected it. And I'll just kind of hold it up right there. It's a little bit, got, got the uh, wind on it. That's a little bit normal. So on this, if you put the thread a little further away from the needle, it can relax a little bit longer, right? You want it to relax before it hits your needle so it can kind of take some of these little twisties out like that, okay? And you can also, again, run this one on an upright spool. It's actually very good that way. Okay, so let's come over here. Oh, we didn't label these, darn it. Okay, we said that this one was 
50 weight cotton. And this one, what, what did I say? This is Madeira, I think. Oh, Mettler. Mettler. Shh. Mettler. Okay, and this one was Madeira. And this one was Rayon. Rayon. Right? Did I say it right? Now I'm getting confused. I set it down, but I guess this is the rayon. I'm making trouble here. I'll put the picture of this up after class so we can see it. This one is the Madeira, and this one is also the 40 weight. Okay, and then what was my one in the middle was the polyester. And that one was the so fine, this one. So fine. So you can see I'm using all different brands. I like whatever thread that I like. I just want to use whatever is working for me, whatever looks good. I have a large selection of thread in a lot of different colors, and they're kind of sorted by what their usage would be. So like I have my rayons kind of all in one place. I have my 30 weights in one place. I have a box of variegated thread that I typically use that's 40 weight poly. And then I have boxes by color. So all of my isochords are boxed up by like the greens, the blues, the yellows, the reds. These are my predominant ones. And then I have boxes and boxes of cotton and they're also sorted by color, okay? That way when I'm looking for something, if I need a poly, I can go to that color box. If I need my cottons, I go to that color box. If I need a specialty thread that I want something decorative, I go to that heavier thread box or I go to that box that has um, specialty threads. Like I have a silk box, I have um, pearlized cotton eight and 15 and 12 weight, which are like couching threads. I have mylar threads. So whatever I have, I, I kind of like keep them all together so that I know where to look for that choice. And as I said, isochord's my biggest one for quilting, so I have a lot of these, and they're organized literally by color. So, okay, so we, we got those all labeled. Again, this is the 30 weight this is a rayon right here, and this is called Mirage. And this thread is, again, by Wonderful, um, which is a Canadian company, and they are, have some absolutely gorgeous threads. It's a family-owned business. <coughs> and I love that. I love that, you know, mom and pop work together. Dad does a lot of the travel. Um, when they go to the shows, they go to the shows as a family. Um, their daughter is, like, part of their operations um, directory. They do travel for thread manufacturing, so they you know, they know where the thread is made. They're able to go to the factory and check on it, which is kind of cool. And they have a lot of education online for their products as well. They don't pay me to say this, okay? I just like it, just so you know. We always have one thread just hanging out, wanting to cause problems, okay? So, Tie it off a little bit, and this time we'll go this way. Okay, so what is happening now is we are right on the line of our double batting. So now we're gonna start to see some changes in how the thread performs. We'll kind of put one on half and half, and you can really see how that double batting is gonna make a difference. I need one more stitch to get in my ditch over here. I'll bring it up to the top and really show you the difference because this is actually right on the double batted line. The line is actually right here. And I could tell because my foot now is tighter. So I was having to pull a little bit more. So maybe we'll also adjust our foot height here just to show you that. So let's cut that off. And I'm gonna pull this up and really show you how that double batting makes a difference to the tension when we quilt. Okay, right there, I'm just gonna kinda hold it with a little bit of the light on it like that. Can you see how much tension we get right here? We even get, you can see the shadow right there. Okay, this is because now we have that double batting right there. So let's go over to here. That looks a little bit flatter. It looks fine, it doesn't look ugly or anything, but it looks flatter, right? You're not gonna get as much lift 
without a single batting. When you just have one, it's always gonna look just a little bit flatter. That's just how it is, okay? So this is definitely giving you a lot more tension when it's pulling these in because that batting is filling up that pocket. And I just think that that looks awesome. So this is important to know if your quilt is really bunchy or it's wavy or it's got some extra fullness, a double batting can absorb a lot of that and make it look awesome. So if you have you know, a quilt that was done a long time ago and maybe your skills weren't as good and you were waiting to quilt it and now it seems really wavy, put a double batting on it. What I normally do with the double batting is this is um, California Request Loft Batting. It's like a, their second to the thickest. It's quite thick, right? It's very, very nice, very even looking. So this is Quilter's Dream. And then this one is just like a regular 80-20. You can see it's a little thinner, right? You can double those up. I usually don't put two of the very thickest together. And if I'm using um, a wool as the topper, where you this is the top of the quilt, I would put the wool on the top side. Just because wool has natural memory, it kind of rebounds to its position. So if you push it down, it pushes back. And so I would always put the wool close to the top if you did that. So there you go. Okay, so that's 30 weight. And that is Mirage by Wonderful. So we'll just put this on as Mirage. 30 weight and again variegated right which we love I love it it looks awesome don't you think and because the colors change it, it draws your eye into that and you can see that two threads one thread big difference with the 30 weight if we go over something more than one time with a 30 weight it's gonna pop out okay so let's go ahead and we'll move to one more I know this is not so much a free motion lesson, but I think if we don't have good threads or we don't know how to use our threads, how can we have a good quilt, right? It's just awkward, it's hard. All right, so all the rest of these are gonna be on this double batted side, so you'll get a good chance to see that. So the last two that I have are both 100 weight. So this is YLI Silk, YLI Silk, and it's 100 weight, so the uh, I don't know, there's some rule about like how much of the thread is needed to make the proper weight and that's how they weigh it. So this is very, very fine, a natural fiber. A little bit more expensive. This one is poly and we're basically going to compare these two threads. So let me just pull a little bit out just so you can see how they look. They are a little different color, but notice that we haven't really changed our needle either. Okay, so we are still using the 90. This is a hundred weight. It's a very fine thread. Probably it's a good idea to change your needle, but I'm not going to, <laughs> right? Break the rules, it's okay, just do it. But what would cause me to change my needle? Who knows, right? If the thread cannot perform with the needle that I have on it, I know that this is not the best needle. So that would be the first thing that I would check if I were trying to make it behave and it was behaving badly, I would change my needle because I know that this is a really fine thread and I know it needs a little help. But I will tell you, I, I sew with it with this needle actually quite a lot. So <laughs> I know it will work. I know it's, it'll be fine. Right? See, break the rules. As long as you know the rules, then you can knowingly break them and decide what you want to do. Okay, so we're threaded up. Let's get our little circle out and we'll put it down here. Now this one is a little paler, but it is gonna be stitching right on this double batting. And the presence on it is very, very low volume. Okay, get our little bobbin thread up. That double batting is holding on to that thread because it's just coming up a little bit, but that batting is taking up a lot more space. Okay, so let's sew. I'm actually gonna change my needle, my foot height, because it's very low. So I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit so I have a little bit more room to move with that double batting. Before, the foot was very tight to the fabric, so I could not move smoothly and easily, and now I can. Yeah, thank you, I knew somebody would know that. 
she's put up the, the formula for how they determine what is the thread weight. So we'll go a little bit so you can see a double layer of this, and then we'll just put our little design in. Travel back around here. This only works if you don't move the ruler. If you move the ruler, it gets a little harder to do that. Oh, I thought it was at the end. Did you see that? <laughs> oh, well, it's fine. It'll be fine. Let's cut it. All right, let's cut some thread and then we'll start comparing. Now, let's talk about tension also with the double batting and things that are important to know with double batting. If you have a very thin batting and you're having trouble with your tension, double batting can be a lifesaver, right? Because what happens is now I have this much room to hide the knot, right? Whereas over here, I only have this much room to hide the knot, right? So if you have a quilt and you're trying to use this ultra, ultra thin batting and you can't get your tension just right, there's probably a reason for that. Thinner batting makes it a lot more difficult to do it. So sometimes this can be the solution. If you've just tried everything else, that might be an idea for you, okay? So this is our silk. I'll kind of bring it up a little bit more. You can see that over on, let's see, right there, this part, this is double stitched, right? And then on this side, this is all single right here. All of this is single. So you can tell that if I do a double layer of this hundred weight, you barely even can tell. That's why I like a thread like this, a lower weight thread for any kind of micro work. So for example, Deco Bob, this is the one that we're going to do is Invisifil, but, um, a cottonized polyester that's a deco bob and it comes in all different colors and it's an 80 weight thread and that can be something that's really really great to use if you're doing a lot of micro quilting because the thinner thread you can go over your little pebbles a bunch of times and you'll never see it but if I went over my pebbles two or three times with a 40 weight thread they look ugly I don't like that I want something that's a little bit more delicate that gives me room to have a, a lot of thread laid down without it looking ugly. Okay, so this one was the silk. So we'll mark that. This is a YLI silk. I also really like the kimono silk. I've used that many times. Um, it's basically color and availability. My shop used to carry YLI, but when I buy silk now, I actually buy the kimono silk. They're both awesome. Love them. So there's nothing that I would say bad about either one of them. Okay, so let's thread up this last one. And this one, the last one is um, the small spool. So we need the correct spool cap. And this was as close as I could get. It's not quite the same color, but it is pretty fine. So I think it'll be okay as far as our visual. We'll still be able to see what we need to see. Where did I put that little spool cap? I have the big one in my hand, but I can't find my small one. I just took it off. Hmm. Whoa. <laughs> you guys are probably like, uh, look down. Okay, I found it. Thank goodness. The camera was in the way. That's my excuse, and I'm going with it. Okay, I'm going to set my machine into threading mode. And you can see that, you know, if you have a, a good machine with a good threader, boy, it can be so much easier to thread up your machine so quickly. Just make sure you go through all of the correct paths. Right there is number seven for me. And then mine cuts off right here. And the foot is already down and these are already open. The tension discs are open because I've pressed my threading button. Um, Julia, let me see if I can see your question a little better. Hang on just a second. I have to get to my Facebook page where I can see our comments. You think I would have that up already, but I was, I just started going just like I always do. I just start going and then that's just what happens. All right. So we have our volume off, fortunately, because otherwise you can hear double sound, which would be 
really uncomfortable. And then let's see what the comments are. All right. Julia said, what is the Invisafil thread? Um, Deco Bob is 80 weight. I do use it for piecing a lot. Um, the Invisafil thread, it's very fine. Let's see if I have any out. I don't. I only have the one that's on the spool. Oh, maybe I do. Right here. This is this is Deco Bob, actually. It's black, but you can see it's very fine, right? And this is the cottonized polyester. It's a polyester, but the texture on the outside is kind of cottonized so that it will grip a little bit better. And this is um, one that I use in the bobbin when I piece. I like how thin this is, but it's also great for quilting. You know, it's, I use it a lot on the back of quilts that um, maybe are busy where you're not going to see the thread because it's strong and it works really well, but um, it's, it's a little bit more texture than Invisafil. Invisafil is very, very slick and fine, whereas this kind of has a little more of a cottonized texture. So if you're working micro quilting, I love this Deco Bob for that purpose. I did not have one of these for, the, for our color change today. Plus you're probably like, oh my God, when will she get to the end, right? <laughs> okay, let's thread this baby up and we will move on. It did not work out. Let me see if I can pull this out just a little bit more so we can get threaded. I'm not sure what I did wrong. Make sure my needle position's all the way up. There we go. So let's talk about using your threader too. I want to mention really quickly, if I change my needle and I have a small needle like 7511, I can't use my needle threader with some of these really, really small needles. So if you're not using the standard like an 80 or a 90, make sure you check in your manual to see what is the smallest size that your threader can thread through. Because then you could end up damaging your threader if you are trying to use it on a needle that is too small and the little thing can't go in there. So definitely check and make sure what your manual says when you're using a smaller needle. Okay, that'll be just an important tip to keep in your mind. All right, so here's our last one today. This thread is the Invisafil. It's 100 weight. And let's talk about the bobbin too. So I'm just going to pull these two threads and I'll lay them right on top of each other like that. Can you see that I told you I was using the 40 weight right here, a heavier bobbin? You can see the difference right there. This is the Invisafil and this is my regular like isocord bobbin. So it's 40 weight. Big difference. Can I use different weights in my bobbin? Of course. Whatever you want. As long as I can get the tension to adjust and look reasonable, I can do whatever I want. I'm in charge, right? So I'm making the rules. There's nothing that says that my bobbin has to be the same top and bottom. I can use different weight, different color, different fiber. I keep catching that little guy. He's got a mind of his own. So don't, don't be afraid of that. There's nothing wrong with that. You're in charge of that and you control what you want based on the look. If I want to use a lighter thread down in the bobbin because I have a very busy thread and I just don't want it to show, got a top stitch thread and it wouldn't thread. Um, what needle size would work? So I need to know the weight of your thread Lots of thread can be top stitch. I could use any of these threads for top stitching. You, you're saying that your thread shows more, so it's probably heavier. Well, I would want to know what size, what weight is your thread. So before I could answer that, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer. Here's a way you can find out. A lot of times if you have a thread and you're not sure, you can take the thread name, and a lot of them are specific, like um, it's Mettler 50 or Mettler 40 or something like that. They're specific. You can go to the manufacturer's website and type in what you have, and a lot of times they'll have a needle guide for that thread. So I definitely recommend checking that. So let's go ahead. We'll stitch a little bit double just so we can see the effect of a double thread. We'll do sort of half of it. And then here we'll kind of go this way for our little yin and yang. Come up a little bit. Now, let's talk about tension again. Let's go back to the tension discussion. 
So you'll notice that I haven't really changed tension very much with um, these last couple. And the reason I didn't is as I started sewing, I'm looking at what does it look like? It, does it look flat? Does it look good? Right here, it actually looks great to me. And more than that, I don't see any of the blue coming up from the bottom, which means it's not pulling too hard, right? Ultimately, I should check because maybe this thread is showing on the bottom. Maybe this variegated is showing on the bottom. However, these are all double batted. I think it's unlikely. Let's go ahead and cut it and we'll check. We'll see if I'm right. Maybe I'm lying to you. I'm not sure. All right, so this is the Invisifil thread and we're gonna compare it to the silk, right? Because these are both the same lightweight threads, okay? So still looks pretty. I think it looks good. I'm not unhappy with it. It's a little different, right? But that's just how it is, right? Okay, that's just how it is. All right, so let's flip it over and let's see what we got. Awesome, it looks fine, right? I don't see any of the top thread on the back here. And basically, these should all look the same because these are all the same threads on the back, right? So we'll just kind of scoot out. And it doesn't look that much different. Where you can maybe see the difference is here, you can see the puff of this double batting. Right here, there's actually a deeper shadow. Whereas on here, let's kind of put these in the middle. This is gonna be flatter looking because this is the single batting and this is the double. The line is about right here. So you can see that these definitely look flatter, whereas this has a little bit more tension. Let's talk about one last thing before we break for the day. It's um, right, almost at an hour. People, I, I don't think, know about what density impacts the quilt. So a lot of times people will say, well, I want my baby quilt to be soft and drapey, so I don't want to quilt it a lot. And that is totally your call. This is no criticism of that. But... If I only quilt it a little bit, then this layer and this layer and this layer and this layer are all gonna move against each other separately. So when you wash that baby quilt, if your quilting lines are very far apart, all of these different pieces are gonna be rubbing against each other and pulling on this thread. The more that I quilt it, the less that it will move as separate entities. So. If you have a quilt that you consider to be an heirloom and you want it to be around for the next 100 years and passed on for multiple generations, I really recommend quilting it more, right? Because it's going to last longer. You're creating basically a whole solid piece, right? Um, somebody asked about... <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. Didn't mean to cough on you. Fortunately, I'm at arm's length, right? Ha! <laughs> so it's a little bit harder to wash with the double batting. No lie about that. For sure, it is. I don't want to launder my quilts with heavy agitation anyway. So what I'm going to do is maybe put it on a very low spin, very low agitation in the wash, and then I'm probably not going to put it in the dryer anyway. You know, I'm going to let it air dry put it over the bathtub, you know, hang it um, with some lifts underneath it, maybe somewhere where you can get some air underneath it, put a fan on it, something like that. Not like right on it, but you know, have your ceiling fan moving the air around so you can let it dry naturally. And then if you, if it's still a little stiff, you know, put it in the dryer for like two minutes, right? But you don't want all of that movement and all of that pressure on the threads because then, you know, it's going like this. It's pulling this way, that way, this way, that way. So if we quilt it a little bit more, it's gonna work as one. And baby quilts will eventually soften up. And if you have more quilting on it, when you first give it to your baby, wash it and put some fabric softener on there. Cause that baby quilt's gonna be washed a million times anyway. So throw it in the wash, wash the tar out of it, wash it with hot water, whatever. Um, mostly polyester, which is heat sensitive. Yeah, just use low heat, right? Just use low heat. Cause polyester is more heat sensitive. So is rayon. And also one more talk, topic about rayon. Rayon fabric, um, because it is very heat sensitive, 
It also is a little sensitive to losing its color. Like if you're putting a lot of heat on it or it's hanging in the sun in a window or something like that, it's also sensitive enough that the dyes may fade a little bit. So, you know, you don't want to put this in somewhere where you're going to have that kind of high heat or heavy UV um, area or anything like that. So threads have different functions, different uses. There's so many amazing ones out there. Go ahead and, and use whatever you think is best. And if you've tried everything else, you've re-threaded a million times, you've changed the needle, you've cleaned the machine, you've got the, a good batting, you've got a double batting or whatever, and you still can't make that thread work, maybe it's the thread. Just take it off, use a thread that you commonly use that you know works well, and if that thread is still not working, then it may be your machine right? That's how you can go through the laundry list of checking everything and making sure that you've done all of the correct things and maybe your machine needs a little spa day, right? That's how you can tell. So anyway, that's our lesson for today. It's really all about thread and I, I'm not a thread purist. I have favorites. Certainly you guys see that I have some favorites, but my rule is get the best quality you can afford. It's going to last better and longer and it's going to perform better because it goes through more manufacturing processes to make it perform better. Um, thread sometimes um, is gassed like in, a, in, a, in the production when they gas it, it singes off any extra little fray stuff. So better quality threads go through better processes and then they don't lint up your machine as much. They perform better, they don't break as easily, they last longer. So anyway, it's just a good option to, to make sure that you're picking the best quality that you can afford. And I have some lesser expensive threads that sometimes I just use because they're there and I have to. And that's just how it is. I don't, I don't have any, you know, I can't use this, I can't use that. If it's not going to work, I'm not going to use it. So anyway, thank you so much for attending today. I always appreciate you guys and I hope you had a fun learning adventure with me today and I will go back and answer any questions that I didn't get to. So have a happy, good weekend. Go quilt. I actually will be on this Sunday on the long arm even though So Steady put a notice out that I wouldn't be on. I will be on. So I'm going to tell them that it's not this weekend that I'm not going to be here. So see you on Sunday if you're interested. It's long arm Sunday but I'll have some uh, fun designs, kind of flying geese style. All right. Bye-bye, you guys. Happy quilting.